Hey, so in this episode, we're going to be creating our first block. Hooray! This is going to be a relatively long episode, so uh, strap in. Also, I've got a new mic, so let me know if the sound quality is any good. So we're going to start off by creating a block type.py file, which will manage the different kinds of blocks, their models, and their textures. I'm going to include a numbers.py file in the GitHub repository, link in the description, which will contain a bunch of values that we'll need for the block models. So we're going to import that. For each block type, we have to pass a name and also a list of block faces and their textures. And then we can set the model data of our block type to the model data in our numbers.py file. In the future, we'll be able to set different models for each block type, but that's not for right now. Anyway, we can now remove the stuff that we don't need from our main.py file, create a grass block and some other blocks for later, and then modify our code for it to use our grass blocks model data. And if we run this, we get a nice colorful cube, although something seems off. That's because we need to enable depth testing to be sure that we don't draw back faces on the front. Okay, so that's great and all, but what if we wanted to make our cube look a bit more interesting? To do that, we're going to be using what are known as textures. Textures are like images that our fragment shader can use for coloring in our faces. Basically, we pass what's called a texture sampler to our fragment shader as a uniform for it to be able to sample that texture's color at a certain coordinate. Thing is though, our fragment shader can't access as many textures as we want. The amount of textures we can have is tied to the amount of texture units the GPU has, and that's generally a relatively low number. The solution to having more different block textures is effectively to combine every single texture into one big texture. There are essentially two ways you could do this, by using texture atlases or by using texture arrays. Texture atlases are two-dimensional textures that basically put every one of your smaller textures next to each other and use texture coordinates to select which one you want. Texture arrays on the other hand are three-dimensional textures that basically stack all of your smaller textures one on top of another and that use the Z component to select which one you want. We'll be using texture arrays as they are the more modern solution and don't suffer from some of the problems texture atlases have. Okay, so let's implement this. Before we even do anything yet though, we obviously need textures to load. As usual, you can find these image files on the GitHub link in the description and you can download all of them into your textures folder. So I'm going to start off by creating a new texture manager.py file with a texture manager class that takes the width, height and maximum amount of textures we want to have. This is a bit of a limitation of texture arrays. All of our textures have to have exactly the same width and height. I'm going to create a list to keep track of what textures we've already added and then we can create our actual texture array. Pyglit does provide a clean way of creating textures and texture arrays for OpenGL but I'm not going to use that because I want my tutorials to be applicable to as many different languages and libraries as possible. So we're going to start off by creating and binding our texture and then we can create it as a texture array with our width, height and max texture count. We also need to create a function for generating mip maps for our texture. Then we can make an add texture function which will first check to see if our texture has not yet been added, add it to our textures list if not and then load the texture image file itself using pilot. We want to make sure our texture array is actually bound and then we can call this really big function that essentially pastes our texture data where we want it to be in our texture array. Then we can go back to our block type.py file, add the texture manager argument to our init function for passing the texture manager and then we can add each texture from our block face textures with our texture manager. Then we can go back to our main.py file to create our texture manager and pass it all to our block and not forget to call the generate mipmax function. Then we can create a shader uniform for passing our texture array. Then we can bind the texture in the draw call. Basically this is telling OpenGL to put the texture that we just made with the texture manager in the first texture unit and to use that texture unit for our shaders sampler. And finally we create the texture array sampler unit form in the fragment shader and use the texture to sample our texture at any 3D vector you want. Now, if you don't understand what these shader things are, I encourage you to watch episodes number three and four of my series, as this stuff is pretty important. So I'm going to sample at 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 by 1.0 just for testing, and if we run it now, we can see our cube is now green, which is indeed the color sampled at the position we asked it to. But how do we make it so that our texture is sampled at different places depending on where on the block face the fragment is? By using a different texture coordinate for each vertex and interpolating between them for each fragment of course. To do that we just need to set our block types texture coordinates to the texture coordinates in our numbers.py file and create another VBO in our main.py file. Since we're creating a second attribute we need to set this to 1 instead of 0 and then add that attribute as our texture coordinates in the vertex shader and pass it on to the fragment shader. Again, if you didn't understand what I just said, please watch episode 2. In the fragment shader we can now finally sample our texture at the given texture coordinates, run our program and oh it's blurry. Ah. Indeed, by default, when sampling between pixels, OpenGL will linearly interpolate the values of the neighboring pixels. This is not what we want, however. We want our pixels to be crisp, well-defined, and have hard edges, just like in Minecraft. 
Fixing this is actually fairly trivial. We just need to tell OpenGL to select the nearest pixel's color when sampling instead of interpolating them when magnifying the texture. The last thing we need to do is to make it so that different faces can have different textures, as right now, the only texture we're using is the one at z equals zero, which happens to be cobblestone. You can pause the video right now to see how all this works if you want, but it's nothing complicated or worth explaining to be honest. And that's our first block done. So I've added time codes and links for further reading in the description of this and all previous videos. So I suggest you go check that out if you want to deepen your understanding of the topic. I'm open to answering any and all questions you might have about the stuff covered in this video and previous ones in the comments. So if you do have any, ask away. I'll make sure to keep my descriptions updated with links to good articles I managed to stumble upon. Until next video, peace. Okay, so it's literally been like one month since I've recorded this video and I finally got around to editing it, but uh, whatever, that's irrelevant because that's not what I wanted to talk about. Um, so I would have liked to create a post explaining this, but uh, apparently you need to wait until you have uh, 100 subscribers or something um, before YouTube lets you do that for whatever reason. So uh, by the time this video releases, I'll probably have gone back to school and will most likely have uh, not much time on my hands to create these videos, or at least not as frequently as I have been putting them out recently. The next two or three episodes will hopefully be a bit shorter than this one though. Um, and once I finish those ones, I'll probably post this series on uh, Rivet somewhere uh, and take a break uh, from this project for a while. I recently had the wonderful experience and frustration of uh, working with the PIC microcontrollers in probably one of the most uh, roundabout ways possible for a project of mine. Uh, so I'd like to create a short series kind of explaining all this and uh, in the hopes that someday someone may learn from my uh, numerous mistakes. Um, and also I'd like to make um, uh, one of the video game concepts that I uh, made a video on a while back into an actual game, uh, thinking along the lines of a, a kind of RPG. Uh, so I may post update videos on that, um, but um, other than that, I have some pretty fun projects I'm working on tied to Aqua and custom Android ROMs and BSD-based operating systems that I can't wait to share with the world. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching and have a good one. Peace.